got a special request. We would like to invite Dr. Zhu, who is president of the AIFM, to come and have a few words. Please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. The first, I have to correct, I'm not the president of the AIFM. I'm the deputy managing director. You know the difference between the deputy and the managing director. Otherwise, if I don't do this correct, probably Christine Lagarde will not allow me to go back to my office in Washington. <laughs> but Your know, Excellency, Prime Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here. And particularly, I would like to thank MCCI for the invitation for me to attend this very important and very grand event. I guess I will get a free dinner. <laughs> but as the American says, there's no free dinner. So I have to talk. <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm honored to be here to say a few words. I'm happy because I'm here today to open or training center for the whole Africa. When the Africa region went through strong growth in the past of five, ten years in average about five percent, it has become ever clear. The future's growth, the sustainability of the growth in the future of the African continents depends on whether the continents will be able to build institutional capacity. So we want to build a training center for the whole continent. We found a place. It's here in Mauritius. <laughs> and this center will play a very important role to dissemination world knowledge to the region will play a very important role to share the knowledge among the member states in the continental. And it will play a very important role to support the sustainable growth in the region, in the future. For this reason, I would like to thank your Prime Minister, your personal support, and thank the Mauritius government for your generous financial support for this center, and I thank all of you, because I understand all of you are part of a contributor for this center as well. We opened the center yesterday. Today, we made another decision to appreciate the Mauritius support for this center. We decided to establish a distinguished lecture series. We don't do that quite often. So we we'll invite renowned global leader come to Mauritius to give a lecture. We we'll invite all the leaders around the region in Africa. We we'll invite all the leaders and the business communities from all the world come to Mauritius to join this lecture. Events. We decide to name this lecture as a Sir C. Was Sagal Run Go Long Distinguished Lecture Series. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you. I hope in due course, when we have events, all of you will be there. Because they will bring the whole world to Mauritius. Why Mauritius? Yes, Mauritius government committed the meaningful financial support. Yes, Mauritius government committed to provide infrastructure support. Yes, the Mauritius business community, the uh, Mauritius people also 
very much welcome us to come to this place. But more than that, I think more importantly, we decide to set this center in the Mauritius because in Mauritius, you have the vision. You see the importance to build institutional capacity, not only for yourself, but for the whole continent in the future. Because you're willing to share your experience with the member states in the region. Because your leadership, you want to lead is a very important issues, very important area in the region. So Mauritius will be the center of its knowledge and heart. In the whole world, this is the only place we have one technical center, one training center together. So the world provides very strong technical support, human resource training to support this continental for the future sustainable growth as well. In that way, I want to thank you again. Okay. seven years, when the world experienced financial crisis, Mauritius has been able to have a macro stability, to manage roughly 3 to 4% of GDP growth rates, and to maintain a strong credible financial sector, and to maintain the credit to the whole world. 2007. Mauritius per capita GDP is roughly $6,192. Today, after seven years, after this big global financial crisis, the per capita GDP did not dip at all, but increased at the end of the year almost reached 10,000 US dollars per capita. Mauritius is one of the very few countries be able to overcome this financial crisis, be promote the growth, and increase per capita GDP almost 40% in a global financial crisis environment. This is a great, great achievement. Congratulations. It gives us a great confidence center in this place as well. <coughs> the challenge remains. Mr. Prime Minister, I do have two arms. <laughs> but it's not one hand, another hand. It is one direction. The direction for reform, as you mentioned, and direction for sustainable growth for the country and for the whole world. When we're looking for the global economic situations, we forecast the growth will be around 3.5% GDP growth for this year. The global economy re recovery but still fragile, still uneven. The U.S. first quarter growth is very weak, so we downgrade U.S. growth rates from 2.8% this year to 2.2%. But the second half year's growth will be very strong. The EU will continue to have a moderate growth. But good news is the emerging market has been stabilized, which also provide the growth engine for the whole world. The interesting issues in the financial market Given the current slowdown in the U.S. economies, we foresee the Fed will stay in the low interest rate environment for long. That will provide 
another low interest rates, low volatility financial market conditions. So we expect to see the capital flow will come back. We expect to see many financial activities will happen. What does this mean for Mauritius? Once again, I think this is provide a very good macro environment for Mauritius to use this window of opportunities to continue to reform and to continue to grow. This is the main focus I had a discussion with Prime Minister this afternoon. The Prime Minister has a full agenda for reform. From pension reform because of aging issue, to enhance the monetary policy structure and framework, to provide the transparency to the financial sector, which is a key issue for the future success of Mauritius. To parastate reform, to open the new ocean economy. I think all those reforms will bring Mauritius to a long-term sustainable growth path. And all those reforms will play more and more important roles to build a solid base for the Mauritius to move in the future. We forecast the Mauritius will have a GDP growth rate of 3.7% for this year. We see the growth for next year was stronger because the growth agenda from the government. And inflation is well checked below the 4%. So Mauritius has a good base to go from today to the future. But reform, obviously, is important and the major challenges. So we support government's reform agendas. The fund is committed to Mauritius. The fund is on the member country on this side to help the Mauritius governments to manage the financial and economic stabilities. So we'll move further. 30 years ago, in 1984, you probably recall, Mauritius per capita GDP is a 1,164 dollars per head. As I say, at the end of this year, Mauritius will have per capita GDP around 10,000. In 30 years, Mauritius will be able to increase per capita GDP nine times. Which is not easy. You are making history. But obviously, you have a more ambitious. As Mr. Prime Minister just mentioned, Mauritius is going to move into the advanced economy. I'm sure it will not take another 30 years. Just only a few years. You will be there. But Obviously, we need everyone together working hard for their goal. As the Prime Minister mentioned, together the future shines. The fun is on the Mauritius side. Together the future shines. Thank you very much.